So for the Hicksian demand curve, <coughs> U of X1H of P1 up to Pn U bar, comma, dot, 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 XNH of P1 up to Pn U bar has to be equal to U bar, right? <laughs> That's got to be true. For the Hicksian demand system, if I put in the quantity that I consume at these prices into the utility function, I better get back U bar. Right, because that's how they're built. These, this choice is built to give me U bar. So it has to give me U bar, no matter which prices I throw in here. So again, this is true for all P's, not just the given P. Right, this relationship. This is, no matter what P I put in here, I'm going to get U bar back. Everybody agrees with that. People, this is critical. Because one of the places people make mistakes is forget about when I can do what I'm about to do and when I can't. And the reason I can differentiate this with respect to P and still assume the derivative of this side is equal to the derivative of that side is because this holds for all P. This just doesn't hold for a particular P. No matter what P I put in here, because I got U bar here, I got to get U bar out. People understand that? You don't, but that's OK. You, you'll figure it out later when you make mistakes. I mean, everybody does. This is what everybody is struggle with this. But anyway, all right. So we're going to differentiate spec to some p. So then I'm going to get partial u, partial xi, or say call it xj, sum from j equals 1 to n times partial xjh partial pi has to be equal to 0. All right? That is just totally differentiate with respect to the price of good i. Well, the price of good i is going to change all the goods, but once I weight them by their margin utilities, you've got to end up with no change in utility. So that total derivative has to be 0. In other words, it's going to increase some goods, reduce other goods, but it has to do it in such a way as to hold utility constant. Okay. Now, that ugly term has showed up again. This ugly term right here. Because I don't know that. I don't see that term. But my friend is still available, which is what? I don't see these partial U. But those are, those are proportional to prices. And because I got zero on this kind of equation, proportionality is good enough. Right? This implies the sum from j equals 1 to n of pj partial xjh partial pi equals zero. OK? Right? That is, I can put the pj's where the margin utilities were. Now, you could have said, well, you really got to put, you know, margin utility is not exactly equal to PJ. It's equal to, like, lambda PJ or 1 over mu PJ. But who cares? I can multiply by mu because it's 0 on the other side. Now, how do I make that into an elasticity? Well, I need an XJ here. I better put an XJ here. I need a PI. I can just throw that up there because that's the same for every term. So I don't need to put that in there, right? I multiply the other side by PI, and 0 times PI is still 0. And then I can divide by M just to make my life fun. And once I've done that, this says the sum from J equals 1 to N of the share of good J, epsilon JIH, is also equal to 0. That is called adding up. And adding up relationships are about a restriction applying across the demand equations. That is, across the demand equations, 
however those goods respond to the price of good I, they got to respond in such a way that weighted by their shares, they add up to zero. That's really just saying I have to hold utility constant. I got, if I got some goods going up, I got to have some goods going down. And they not only got to go up and down, they got to go up and down in such a way that basically my cost isn't moving because I have to have, right? Because if, if, if good one goes down and good two is worth six times as much per unit as good one and good one goes down by a unit, good two got to go up by a sixth of a unit. It's just got to be to hold utility constant. That's all this is.